Hello, I'm Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing with Cork Express 2016. And this is uh, a series of uh, videos running throughout 2017 about working with Quark Express. And this week, we're looking at Excel uh, charts being used in Quark. Now, why are we doing this one? Well, for years, the most annoying thing that I had to work with was Excel charts. Um, so every finance team in the world, every business person uh, uses these charts. Uh, they're very easy to make. You, you get a few numbers um, and uh, you uh, bung them in. It creates a chart just like that. And to the person who's done that, this looks great. This looks like real publishing. And so they send it along to you and say, uh, right, quickly pop this into my newsletter or my annual report uh, or my strategy document or whatever it is you're doing for them. Uh, and there's no such thing as quickly pop in with an Excel chart. Because Excel, uh, if we look at the screen here, uh, Excel has, has got its own style. Uh, it will put these gradients in, it puts shadows behind them, uh, it uses its own font, it does it its way. Uh, and that looks great in Microsoft Office documents, but in a properly published branded document, it sticks out like a sore thumb and you can spot them immediately when someone's just pasted in a chart or worst of all, a screenshot of a chart and I've often had people just send me screenshots and say, can't you work with that? And I said, no, I need your Excel, Excel spreadsheet. But of course, then at the last minute, they'll change the spreadsheet. That's what they do. And imagine that's going to take you a minute to put it in. Well, the old way of doing this, let's look at the screen, uh, was uh, to, to copy it um, and then go to Illustrator uh, and uh, uh, paste uh, and instantly I'm going to use mouse pose to show what we're doing. Instantly, you get this error message. An unknown shading type was encountered. That's, that's Microsoft's gradients. OK, we'll do OK. And in it comes, um, sorry, mouse pose is being funny here. Um, in it comes, and you've got all this gobbledygook text. Uh, and there is no way of getting rid of that. So what most people end up doing is they copy the entire chart into Illustrator, use Illustrator's own chart function and create this chart from scratch. The problem is when finance or whoever changes the chart at the last minute, you've got to start again. And also there's always the possibility of error. Uh, and, and, and finance people really don't like it. Uh, when you get it wrong, scientists really, really don't like it. Well, since Quark Express 2016, it's now become uh, much easier to do this. So let me just look for a second at what I want the chart to look like. I want a chart to look like it's part of my branded document. Uh, I want it, for example, if I've got a table that looks like that, uh, then uh, I, I want my chart to look like it goes with it. Well, OK, I'm going to go to Quark and I'm going to do edit, paste as native objects. Now that's the crucial step. And what Quark is now going to do is it's going to put that in as a vector document. Um, so it comes as a couple of boxes. The first thing I want to do is ungroup it. Uh, if you're not fussed, then you don't need to ungroup it. It will save memory and time, but I'm going to ungroup it. And I'm going to delete just those boxes straight away. The next thing I want to do is to just select all of this text. I'm going to marquee select it, uh, get that zero in as well. I'm going to go to Linkster and uh, I'm going to do link, as you can see, keep text in same boxes, OK. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing for the other text. So again, uh, utilities, Linkster, uh, link, keep text in same boxes. And the same thing uh, for this one. I just got to marquee select them. I'm keeping the text in the same boxes so the order isn't actually important. And now I can simply select that, do a Command A or Control A on a PC. And using my style sheet, I'm going to do Option or Alt click on Normal. And it converts all of Microsoft's own formatting, which you can see is Calibri. See at the bottom of the screen here, 
it says it's Calibri. I don't want that. It's not one of my fonts. And I'm going to select all. So uh, Command A or Control A. Uh, option click, Alt click, returns it to the normal style. And there we are. So the fonts have all come in. You'll notice that unlike Illustrator, all the text has come in perfectly. Now, what about uh, these colors? These are the wrong colors. Let's get rid first. I'm going to do F7, and you can see that there's a load of funny boxes we're not interested in. We'll get rid of those. And the reason those are there is because these are those Excel shadows that it loves putting on everything. Uh, I used to work with a statistician who worked for the Australian government. And one of the first things he told me about charts is you want to keep them as simple as possible. But when you're not entirely confident of your data, or you're trying to big it up, the temptation is to use every Excel feature to make it more exciting. And even if you don't, Excel's going in position is it thinks you want that. And so it adds in these gradients uh, and these shadows. And that was what Illustrator was struggling with uh, to some extent, though the text was another issue. So we just delete those, they're irrelevant. You can put a shadow in uh, in Quark Express if you really want to. I don't suggest that you should want to, but you can. But for now, we'll get rid of those. Now, the next thing I want to do is I just want to select all the red, and I'm going to group that because that's going to make it much easier to work with later on and will reduce error. So I'm marquee selecting, and I'm going to do, uh, well, we'll do contextual menu, which is uh, control click. Uh, actually, you can't do the contextual menu. I'm just going to do command G, control G on a PC, uh, and that groups it. And now I'm going to change the color uh, using colors over here. You can see that. But as you see, it doesn't do anything. And that's because these are not colors. They are actually graphic images. Let's use the graphic tool to click on that and have a look. And you'll see that that's what Excel has sent it across as. So I've grouped all the red. And now if I just marquee select everything and click on the red, I've got the blue. So we'll group that. Now I'm going to go to my graphic tool. So over here, uh, the picture content tool. And I'm just going to double click or click on each one. Uh, and you can do this inside uh, a, a grouped group. And you'll see that where I've already put in that color, it retains the color mine. Now I haven't colored the blue yet, um, but that's not a problem. We'll color that in a second because it's all grouped together. I think I turned that, so do Command Z, Control Z, uh, Undo the most important button on any, um, again, I've turned that by accident, uh, most important button on any, any piece of software is undo. We'll just click on that, yeah, click on that one, click on that one, click on that one, click on that one. Oh, let's get rid of that. Now, I, if, if I've changed it, I can go to the bottom here and use the measurements to just sort out that very annoying uh, bit of curving, so zero degrees. Now that's fine. Uh, and we'll go to, you can see these X's show that it's now empty of graphics, which is what we want, uh, because we don't want any of those uh, Excel graphics. Now I'll click on the blue group and give that its color, which is this. Click on F7 uh, on, the, on the keyboard, uh, and then you can see that's done. But it's not quite done. Uh, okay, let's let's get that one in first uh, and that one in. Otherwise, we lose our key. But I would just want a few lines in. So I'm going to go over here to the orthogonal tool, the orthogonal line tool. I'm going to draw a line in there, and uh, we'll give that uh, a fifty percent opacity, uh, just to make it look a little bit nicer. And I'm now going to click on it and. Alt or Option drag, which you see this little plus comes up, and Shift as well, which the plus means it's copying it, and the Shift means that it's constraining it to the same place. And having done that, Command D or Control D on a PC uh, just duplicates in the same position. If I now move 
the bottom one up. I'm going to just shift drag that one and select all of them. I'm going to marquee select. I'll come down now to measurements and I'm going to go to space align and I'm just going to align those. And in just a few minutes, we have had uh, a complete Excel chart completely conformed to the typeface and the look and feel that goes in my document. Now, if you're doing a lot of these, you can use item styles and all kinds of things to help you. But what used to take me half an hour uh, now takes about five minutes. I don't usually talk about it when I'm doing it. I had a, a very major document for a, a very large client uh, last year, or, well, yeah, last year, and uh, we were working up to a five o'clock deadline. This document had to be submitted. It was, uh, I think, 50 pages long. And at 10 past four on a five o'clock deadline, uh, the finance guys rang me up and said, we've got to change all of the charts. And the previous year, I would just have had to say, say, I'm sorry, we can't do that. It will take me, per chart, 20 minutes, at the minimum in Illustrator, even if I don't make any mistakes, uh, to get these ready. In Quark Express 2016, I was able to do it and get it done uh, for the deadline. In fact, I was 20 minutes early. This is revolutionary stuff. So that's stuff to refresh. The key thing we're doing here is uh, going to edit, paste as native objects. What that does, is it takes a graphic from the clipboard and converts it to the vectors it's come from and allows you then to ungroup and work with those. Now this doesn't always work. Uh, Microsoft Office, Office documents are actually quite difficult. But if pasting doesn't work, then output as a PDF and import as PDF and then do style uh, convert to native objects. So you can do it either through paste or you can do it through style. Again, you could try that in Illustrator, but the result will be the same, gobbledygook text. I've tried it very many times. For almost all graphics produced by Microsoft Office, Quark Express is the only application which can actually turn them into native vectors and edit them to be matching your brand. Well, that was it for this time. I'm Martin Turner, uh, author of Desktop Publishing with Quark Express 2016. You can get it from Amazon or your local bookstore. Uh, we're going to be doing these every week throughout 2017. And I hope to join you next week.